This presentation describes the value of transcranial Doppler for TVAR and endo procedures involved in ascending aorta and the aortic arch. And the focus of this is really, it's, it's all about uh, preserving uh, the brain and avoiding strokes during these procedures. Here are some of the conflicts. I would add that as you're looking at these, that uh, this has become a, a big uh, topic as we increasingly recognize the importance of brain injury that can occur from the result of some complex procedures now being performed in the aortic valve, the ascending aorta, aortic arch and its branches. There are a number of different ways in which we can perform cerebral monitoring. Uh, and, and you can see in this patient, we're actually doing all three. There's EEG monitoring, uh, which depends upon detecting a uh, change in electrical signals in the brain as a function of a change in vascular supply. Uh, Invus or venous oximetry measures venous oximetry in the frontal lobes. Again, also dependent on change in arterial uh, input. Transcranial Doppler, in contrast, directly measures the arterial flow. In addition to that, it's the only one that actually detects embolization. And EEG and Invus really are not don't detect embolization unless it's massive. And embolization is the most common problem that's associated uh, with uh, these um, complex proximal procedures. So let's just talk a little bit about the basics of transcranial Doppler and what does it measure. It measures flow velocity in certain vessels. It measures the direction of flow in those vessels. It detect, detects high intensity transient signals, which are, which are emboli. It can't really distinguish between air and a particular emboli. Uh, which vessels it can I look at the anterior circulation, the middle cerebral artery, anterior communicating artery, and the posterior communicating arteries. It can also measure, look at the vertebrals and the internal carotid the arteries at its termination. Those are the advantages uh, so are that it's real time and it's dynamic. The disadvantage is you know, a certain amount of expertise is required. 10 to 20% of people don't have windows, particularly windows, temporal windows, which allow you to look at the middle cerebral artery, ACA, PCA axis. And really there's debate, but in general, you can't reliably distinguish it between air versus particular. So typically we look through the temporal lobe uh, where the bone is thinner and as you can see on a screen right the ipsilateral MCA blood is normally flowing towards the probe, it's depicted as red. Uh, the anterior cerebral artery typically blood is flowing away from the probe so it's blue. Uh, it can also detect the anterior communicating artery and it can also look at the um, contralateral anterior cerebral artery which is normally uh, flowing uh, towards the probe. And so when you look at the pro in the window, the transcranial Doppler window, you can see that red here is frontal is MCA and MCA. This yellow line which you're looking at here is where you can essentially tune the depth of the transducer to produce that Doppler signal in the lower part of the field. And typically, at about up to about 60 millimeters from the surface of the brain, and I should say the surface of the skull, you're actually looking at the um, ipsilateral middle cerebral artery. Beyond 60, typically the anterior cerebral, and then we can actually cross the midline and start looking at the anterior cerebral. And by adjusting that, the depth of that yellow line where interrogating it, it produces the waveform, which you can see really, really at the bottom of the probe. So this is how that actually works. So why then is this a value in thoracic endografting and indeed in percutaneous aortic valve placement? Because the more proximal the device is placed, the higher the CVA rate, which we're looking at. It allows you to do real-time troubleshooting. If you, if you suddenly lose all flow, as we've seen, then you've got an embolus the middle cerebral artery, you immediately go to salvage. Uh, when you look at an embolization, it lets you analyze the procedure. This is what I was doing, and this is when the embolization occurred. So it helps you troubleshoot, if not for that particular case, for future cases. And after the procedure, as you'll see, we, we can say, how can you then improve device design? How can I potentially improve my technique? Or do we need embolization protection devices? So again, here's an example of uh, where we we're see we've got a single branch arch device, thoracic branch, the patient had a post um, procedure uh, stroke. And then they end up, the question is, well, when did it happen? Um, why did it happen? And is it preventable? Is there something we can do? 
And the reality is that you really have no idea. Unless you're doing transcranial Doppler, then which allows you to break it down into its component parts. So now give you an example. Here's another patient where we can see the bottom of the screen. This is transcranial Doppler from both the right and left hemispheres. Um, and we have a branch device which is going, uh, which is being uh, passed the branch up into the innominate artery. And all of a sudden you see these signals actually occurring. These, these white overlying signals, when they have a slope, represents bihemispheric embolization that's occurring as we clearly catch the edge base of the innominate artery. And you can see that it's still embolizing even as we follow this. And so this is one of the, the signs, at least, that during that period embolization was occurring. Now, that does not necessarily mean the patient had a stroke. And that's one of the limitations of this. This is very sensitive. If you do not have any emboli occurring and the patient has a stroke post-procedure, then it certainly didn't occur in the phase of the, of the procedure where we did not detect any uh, any hits. And this is essentially what, what these, these hits look like when we're actually monitoring them. We see them superimposed upon the Doppler signal. And so this is what, how it really helps you. And in this situation, you can see that, that the bottom screen, we go from being pulsatile to essentially being flat towards the right side of the screen. This was a major embolus into the middle cerebral artery, and that patient um, went immediately to neurosalvage. So again, what we're trying to do is address this clinical dilemma. And we have this argument all the time but around open heart cases. It's the same situation. Patient goes to sleep, procedure's performed, patient wakens up with a stroke, you got to fix something. What are we going to fix? We don't know what actually caused it. Was it positioning the device? Was it deploying the device? Was it putting in the side branch? Was it air? Was it um, or was it uh, particulate? Uh, these are the, the questions which all arise after it. And we believe TCD at least gives you a window into understanding that. And if we look really at the procedure, this is our first publication, Journal of Vascular Surgery. Uh, we divide all the phases of all the procedures we monitor into embologenic phases. So and TC and, and T bar we divide into a diagnostic phase. Uh, above the line is, is right hemisphere, below the line left hemisphere. Each of the different color codes represents a different procedure. And you can see in this situation, device delivery and deployment was clearly when most of the embolization occurred. And if you look basically at the diagnostic phase, wire up, and catheter up, diagnostic shot versus device positioning, then clearly it's weighted towards basically the, the, the latter part of this. So at least that helps you really understand that. And we can also show that the more proximal the landed zone, then the higher the instance of emboli that you're going to occur. And that, and that has been maintained really to this day. So this is one of the first observations in relating uh, TCD hits uh, to device placement. And clearly it needs to be refined a lot more than that. More than that. And so now one of the questions we're, we're going to see, and here's a, an, a, one of the earlier ascending grafts, and you see the ascending graft being deployed, that's speeded up, and you get this massive bihemispheric embolization. And although there's an argument about air versus particulate, it pro is important, but there's no such thing as good embolization. It's all degrees, different degrees of badness. And as this concept of cerebrovascular health uh, develops and potentially the role of embolization in causing dementia or vascular dementia, this is something that we're going to really have to address. Now, one of the two problems that we talked about is the lack of expertise in interpreting this and who's going to put the, the, the probes on. Now, we have two potential solutions for this. One is this robotic transcranial Doppler system that these probes will autonomously engage the hemisphere and actually are faster than manually doing this. And then they will, will, will track this during the course of the procedure. So one solution in terms of those who don't have this expertise is potentially to use these robotic TCD probes which will acquire the signal autonomously. And in terms of interpretation of it, this is basically how we've done it. This is us essentially doing a branch graft. And uh, Dr. Grammy, my partner in Transcranial Doppler, is monitoring this uh, remotely because we're sending the TCD signal to him through this in-touch remote viewing robot. And as you know, there are lots of different companies that have now entered this fray and are actually looking at remote monitoring. This is how we've really been doing it for the past three to four years. And he's telling me when I'm causing embolization and telling me, uh, and I can try and modify it basically if at all possible. So this is very helpful. So in conclusion, I think that transcranial droplet is the most valuable tool in troubleshooting interventions in, in the valve, ascending aorta and the arch. Solutions now exist for most of the challenges associated with transcranial Doppler, autonomous application and remote interpretation. We believe TCD should be incorporated into most vascular laboratories and our preliminary data, and this is the teaser, do not show that protection devices, at least the ones we've studied to date, reduce the incident of embolization. Thank you very much.